All right. Our very special guest is Desmond Chim. He plays Dovich on the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Desmond, welcome to Friends from Work. What's up, guys? Good to be here. Good to good to see you outside of a work context, mate. I just see you with a water cooler all the time. Yeah. <laughs> How did I do with your last name? Close? You nailed it. You're the you've been the most spot on of anyone so far. Really? I'm, not, I'm, I'm literally not just saying that. That's why my face did that when you said my name. I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good. I practiced a little really bit, good. so you don't judge. It. Yeah. Uh, you nailed it, mate. <laughs> okay, so take us back a little bit, rewind. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. was it like? For you, when you first got that call from Marvel, where were you at? What was your reaction? <laughs> Just paint a better picture of that for us. Oh, man. I was, uh, serendipitously enough, at the gym. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> so, you know, you get the call to be a, to be a super so soldier on screen here at the gym. <laughs> I think the universe is sending you a pretty strong message there. <laughs> yes. um, so I left immediately. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got the call and I hadn't – I'm – pretty quiet about my audition. So I don't tell anyone, even my wife about them. And she was there with me. And uh, mm. after I got off, she was like, your face is dead white and you seem to be shaking like a leaf. What happened? And I was like, bubble cool. <laughs> bubble, the, the, you know, the, <laughs> my voice did do that. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, she was like, what are you talking about? You, it's delusional. You've done too many press ups and you, you've gotten dizzy and you, you're, you're on, you're on about something. Um, and I was like, no, 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 no. I auditioned for this part and they called and they wanted the offers there. I can take it. Um, and as I'm like gushing and sort of like, I'm just collapsing onto the ground in a puddle, these like three gym bros who are huge, like dudes, they, they got to, they, they're like, they, they'd make, they'd make the Hulk look small, man. They, they came, <laughs> they were like, Hey dude, are you, are you okay? Like, you know, you, you, you good. You need to sit up. You got to get the blood flowing. You can't just, and I was like, no, 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 this isn't gym related. It's not gym related. You're good. Just put, thank you. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Um, shout out to those bros, the, the, yeah, the gym yeah. guys, those gym, gym guys are lovely. They look hey, really scary, but they're so nice. We don't need to stereotype gym guys. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Screw toxic masculinity. But that's, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much what happened. That is exactly what happened actually. That's so cool. Yeah. So, You've been an actor in a few different things and a lot of unique stuff. But when you walked on yeah. the set of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, does a Marvel set feel different? Yeah, it does. It does. It sort of melds this. You know, I've been on big budget sets before. Shannara was, was – that was money that MTV spent. Um, there was this – nonchalance is the only way I can describe it hmm. in the air walking onto the Marvel set. Like, yeah, it's huge. And you know, the budget is the biggest thing you've ever done. And, and you know, there's more money being spent a minute than, than anywhere else you've ever been, hmm. but it's so chill and, and open and relaxed. And this, I don't know if this is every Marvel set, but this, it certainly was ours. And I think it was benefit of having three, three ladies in charge. Um, you know, our, our producer, our line producer, and our director were all women. Um, and I think there was just no ego uh, about it all. And that sort of set the tone of like, yeah, okay, we're spending huge amounts of money and this is insane. Don't get me wrong, the little kid in me was freaking out with like helicopters and giant blue screens and movable truck beds and like, you know, mm -hmm. these cabs that, that had hydraulics that we could lift. And it was wild and insane, but it didn't feel intimidating. Um, wow. And that was great. That was so lovely. As an actor, the moment you walk on, you feel that. You're like, okay. I can do my job. Kind of puts everyone's guard at ease a little bit. Yeah, yeah, man. And that's how that's how you got to work, especially in a, in a sort of like a buddy situation like this one was. Everyone's got to be at ease. You got to have be able mm -hmm. to talk each other and have that chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, so important. So important. Mm. Well, we're loving the show so far, yeah. and I love your role. I'm I'm loving the flag smashers. Uh, but on on top of that, the entire cast seems really great. I mean, overall, yeah. it's an awesome cast. What's it like working with the likes of, you know, Anthony Mackie, Sebastian Stan, Aaron Kellyman, et cetera? Well, again, on and that, on. That, you know, that chemistry between, I mean, between our two leads is, is non, non pare. Uh, you can't, you can't, you can't bottle it. I mean, they just have mm. something. They've been working together for a long time, obviously. And there is, again, an ease to it. Sometimes when you see people who have been paired up, it's like, oh, you two are buddies. They're really, you know, they ham it up. They push too hard. It's just way yeah. too much. And, and the, the, again, I, it comes back to that nonchalance, that ease that they had that, that made that dynamic work really well. And as far as – and most of my work, honestly, was with uh, Aaron. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Aaron is just a 
force without having to mm. be a force. She is so lovely. You know, I was just on another thing describing her as as a lovely person and a really, really good actor, really bloody amazing actor. And it's very rare that those two things come together because sometimes mm. really good actors can kind of be assholes. Mm. Uh, no, man, she was so chill. She brought us together. Like there's a reason they cast her as the leader of the Flag Smashers. Hey, because under her, like by the first day, we were all introduced first day um, on set together. We were all gelling and laughing and having fun and and Tyler's over in the corner beatboxing and Renessa's throwing out some freestyles and India's throwing out some like sick dance moves. <laughs> like we were all, th- that was our first day on set. Wow. Like we all just gelled immediately and it, it wouldn't have happened if 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 Erin made it weird. So thanks, Erin, for not making it weird. If, <laughs> if she's to listening this. to this, yes. Yes, thank you. I love that girl. She's so lovely. That's so cool. That's, I mean, yeah. I never thought about the importance of casting the leader like that to actually be yeah. a leader off screen too. Yeah, That's man. cool. She, she she is and she will continue to do so. She's she's so good, man. Hmm. I cannot sing her prices enough. Were there any pranksters or jokesters on set or is it not work like that? Nah, Tyler. <laughs> if you're out yeah. there, <laughs> yeah. If you're out there, he plays Diego. Uh, he, he's he's the little one with the lot. The other the other guy with the long hair. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a riot man. He's he's dope. Just like shadow boxing in the corner with with everyone. Is or or like we just be in between takes, and I'd feel like these taps on my back, and then I turn around, and he's just like, oh. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> It was so fun. It was so much fun. And then Reness as well. Reness is just a big teddy bear. I love that man. Hmm. I love that man. He loves he loves the material too. He is the biggest nerd and the gentlest six foot seven human being I've ever met. Or oh, six wow. foot eight, however tall he is. He's massive. Yeah. In episode one, you're the guy behind the mask that kicks the guy, right? And and yeah. punches the guy. Do you get to do that or is that a stunt double? Do you get to actually uh, punch somebody? We were both there. A stunt double did the kick Kim Do. Okay. Stunt doubles are amazing. Uh, there's a bit of a thing going on right now in in uh, the actor sphere. We're trying to get it moving. Uh, who's your double? I'd love if any actors hear this post up their doubles because they do not get enough recognition. Hmm. Um, we need a stunt category at the Oscars because hmm. the amount of work that they do, they make us look so good and for nothing. They injure themselves for nothing. They throw their bodies into dangerous situations that are specifically dangerous that they can't risk the actor in for us. You know, it's hmm. wild. They get so little recognition for it. They are the true superheroes. Um, hmm. Kim Do, mine, is an absolute legend. He's a pleasure to work with. Um, and he took a lot of, you know, I was able to work with him on character, which sometimes you can't do with a stunt double. You know, it's like they have their specific way of doing it, but I was able to be like, hey, no, like, you know, Dovich just thinking this in this moment or he's doing this in this moment. Um, hmm. You know, he's feeling cocky or he's feeling kind of like, you know, disenfranchised, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that is something I'm, I'm really passionate about. Any actor who says they did not have a stunt double is straight up, and I will say this on the record, is straight up lying, except for Tom hmm. Cruise and a couple of others. They are, uh, we... We do, we, yes, sure, you get to do some stunts, but we only get to do what stunts allows us to do. Make no mm. bones about it. That's more for some people and that's less for some people, but you have a double. Do not disrespect them and say that you did not have one. Hmm. Yeah. That's actually a good word. That's not something, even someone like me who covers this stuff, I never would have thought of that, that they, yeah, they don't get the recognition, I guess. Yeah, yeah. A separate category would be good. I like yeah. that. Oh, hell yeah, it'd be amazing. And, and think about it as well, just the, just the sort of carrot of it, you know, like, we see incredible stunt work. It's, it'll get even like better if, if there's, you know, even more reward. Yeah, true. Yeah. true. yeah. Especially in this universe. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, do you have a personal history with Marvel? Like before, or did this show get you into it? <laughs> no, I never heard of Marvel before. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I did. I did. I did. I, I fully did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I was a massive um, Captain America fan. Oh. Um, and I think that was. Well, that's uh, fitting. Did it. Yeah, I did a post on social media about what, what he meant to me and my story with him. And he's sort of been this, this. Uh, oh man, I use this word too much. I've used it in every single interview, but it's the only word I can think of describing it. It's a totem because a totem provides for you at any mm. point in your life. Uh, you know, the, not that Cap is mutable and he changes, uh, mutatable rather. It's that his he's so finely tuned as a character as to help you out in any situation that you need help with. Mm. You know, when I was younger and there were a lot of demands placed on me as, as a kid to perform, there was that peak human aspect of it that was like, cool, all right, he's peak human, I can do that. Um, and then right. past that, you know, tougher emotional experiences, okay, well, he lost Bucky and he lost Bucky and he became Cap. It forged him into something better. Great, you know, he has that meaning too. And then now, you know, in this industry, which which can be rough sometimes, it does deliver some body blows. Uh, well, taking body blows, he can do that all day. 
You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. the meaning has changed over time and will continue to change, I think. And that's a testament to his power, the peak human aspect of him. But it's also a testament to Steve Rogers' human spirit, right? Like mm. that is his actual power, you know, mm-hmm. not, a, not a perfect soldier, but a good person. Yes. Um, and he has been since his inception in the comic books. I don't know. There, there, was, a bit, there was a bit of odd stuff with that Hydra turn in, in the recent comics <laughs> that I mm-hmm. – was like, yeah, this, this is cool, but it's a little inconsistent, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, that's- I love how full circle that is for you now because that's <laughs> exactly what they're exploring in this show <laughs> with John Walker yeah. too, right? Like what exactly. does Captain America mean and does it mean different things to different people? Yeah, and it, it should. It really should. There's different ways that people approach things as Cap, you know, the, the whole mm-hmm. question of who's going to be that Captain America. Like there is – that that dogs all our protagonists through this whole this whole series, and it comes down to even stuff the way they've they they hand like the details. Man, Marvel's really good with this. Encourage really good with this is, is handling the details of those those characters. You know, they each handle the shield a different way. They don't do it the same way Steve Rogers does. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's sort of I guess a metaphor for for he can be what Cap is in you. It's your job to bring him out, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not that Steve Rogers isn't the be all and end all of it. You also can. Is love that. It. Love yeah. that. Love that. Well, again, I love that's why the you know the show's exploring that. Love it. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. We talked about it's not just a talented cast though. It's also yeah. a very diverse cast. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit to the importance of diversity in these shows and in these movies? It's it's incredibly important, especially in something mm-hmm. as in the zeitgeist and as ten pole as Marvel. Um, you know, I mm-hmm. love that we're seeing Shang Chi coming out. You know, Black mm-hmm. Panther obviously um, did a lot, and there is look, there is an aspect of they're not moving the argument per se, right? It's it's not like Marvel or Disney are making any new um, crazy like statements. Yeah, sure, sure, uh, sure. You know, there is a level of broad appeal. But but we need someone who has the level of audience that they do to normalize everything. And that's what they're doing. They're mm-hmm. sort of using their clout to, to be like, hey, it's normal to see a full cast of African-American people. It's normal to see a full cast of Asian people. And that, to me, is the, such, such a good thing that they're doing. And the way they cast, I think, us in the Flag Smashers was also very, very. It, w- it was it was pretty cool. It was cool to see everyone come from a different place and have their own specific story. Because ultimately, mm-hmm. that's sort of what the Flag Smashers are about: is they're not a homogenous unit. They they do have their own sort of wants, needs, desires, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, that we all sort of kept in here as actors to try to ground them. Um, as as small as necessarily some of our parts might be, but um, everyone sort of brought their A game with that because we knew that we had to demonstrate us and our where we come from realistically on screen uh, or, or this project that they were doing with our casting would just fall apart. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something they trusted us with, which is more than I can say for a lot of other places that I've worked. They don't trust us with our own story. Well, and, and, and even if they're not changing the story, yeah. you know, you now have – an African American kid that can look up to Black Panther on the yeah. biggest level possible, and that's exactly. someone that looks like him, and yep. and he's ready to be a hero. And, or even yep. just that you you mentioned that the show's got three female uh, showrunners, like yeah. leaders. Yeah, you know, that's cool. That's wild. I, they, I, I don't know why they don't mention that more, but yeah, it was it was really really cool. That's that's a uh, it was a good experience, you know, good. and something to be aspired to. Hmm. Okay, last question. All right, um, everybody that gets cast in one of these roles. Like mm-hmm. you said, gets in the gym, gets a little exercise routine. <laughs> it looks like you already were in good shape. I was already there, man. I was already in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but did you follow a particular routine to get just absolutely yoked? Uh, you know, I just sort of kept up with my regular. I'm, I'm pretty consistent with the gym. Uh, I just sort of amped it up. I was just sort of took my regular thing and it was like, okay, let's dial it up to 11. I put the Avengers theme song in the background. Yeah, there you go. Stuck a poster of, of see, of, I do that too, but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, those gym bros, they really gave those three gym bros gave me a really good program to follow. I, I okay, yeah, I, there you go. Yeah, no, I did. I kept it up, and then sort of um, when we were on hiatus, it was sort of like, okay, I have to keep this up too. I'm, I can't go to the gym right now, so I bought a barbell, and um, this was kind of like this was good. This was a good lesson for me actually. And if you're into fitness, this is this is important because you can get too granular with it. I was like, well, what am I going to do during COVID? I bought a barbell. 
bought some plates and that's all I had for a year. And I mm. still managed to put on size and, and, mm. um, and keep it up. You just know? at your house? Was, yeah, just at my house. I have like maybe eight square feet of space. That's been my <laughs> gym for a year. Wow. Um, so yeah. It's yeah, possible. You know, you don't, yeah, you don't need fancy. You don't need a lot of fancy stuff. You just need a yeah. bar and a couple of heavy things. You can do it, people. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what would Steve Rogers do? <laughs> yeah, right. We can do it all day. Exactly. Um, well, this has been an absolute blast. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I don't want right. to keep you too long, but just know that from us and from Robbie, we are really enjoying your work. Our listeners are really enjoying your work. And uh, we're really looking forward to see where your career takes off from here. Thanks, man. And I know really appreciate it. you have a standing invitation to join friends from work whenever you want. Uh -huh. So that's out there. The ball's in your court. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, do. Well, I will take advantage of that for sure, mate. You have my there work. You go. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Thanks, brother. I really appreciate it.